when we talk about shear force and bending moments acting on a beam it is very important to understand the types of load that act on a beam so this lecture is about the basics of the beams its type of loading and types of supports so a beam is a structural element which is subjected to load transfers to its axis so in the figure you can see a beam that is supported by the roller supports so here it is roller supports and the load that is acting on the beam you can see the distributed load and it is represented by black color so this beam is loaded transversely transversely means the load is acting in the direction perpendicular to the axis similarly in the second figure you can see a beam that is acted by a point load so in this figure you can see that in both the cases the load is acting in the transverse direction that is perpendicular to the axis so we represent beams as a horizontal line when we draw the line diagram that represents various forces acting on it so a line diagram that represents this type of loading will be represented by a horizontal line and it is supported from the ends by the roller support so i will mark the arrows that is the direction of the reactions on the beam and a uniformly distributed load is represented by this symbol so now in this particular case you can see that the uniformly distributed load is acting on the whole span of the beam so the line diagram for the second beam can be drawn by a horizontal line again it is the roller support so i will have the reactions at that point r1 r2 and there is a point load i will represent it as an arrow so to support the beam there are various types of supports that are provided each support can sustain a set of forces so for example one of the type is roller support so here you can see that the beam is supported with the help of rollers so wherever there are rollers present we have the reaction force that is directly upward particularly in roller supports we will have only normal reactions there will not be any other component of the reaction forces so this type of supports are used to support the beam that is having vertical loads any inclined load will not be supported by this type of support as the horizontal component of this force will not be resisted by the roller supports so the beam will slide over the roller support so if i want to draw the line diagram for this type of beam i will draw horizontal line i will represent the roller support by reaction r1 and r2 and i will also represent the forces acting on it so here it is point load so i will mark only the arrows the second one is the hinge support so in hinge support the beam can swing however it can't move transversely so it can be represented by the symbol as shown in the figure so this type of support is used when we have inclined forces so this type of support resist both the axial and normal forces so in this we can draw the line diagram as r1 and the force f1 if there is an inclined force also then there will be another reaction that is r2 along the axis however this type of 
sport allows swing of the beam so there is no resistive moment offered by the sport so now the third type of sport is the fixed or built in sport this type of sport doesn't allow any type of movement it resist the axial movement as well as transverse movement it also resist the rotation of the beam so these motions are restricted so that's why this particular type of beam can be represented by a line diagram in which we will have the reaction force r1 and r2 so if we are having an inclined force also so it will offer a axial reaction at the support point and it also offers a resistive movement so these are various types of sports that we study about in the beams so depending upon the type of sports the beam can be classified as simply supported beam and cantilever beam when both the sports of the beam are roller sports or one sport is roller and the another is hinged the beam is called simply supported beam in cantilever beam one end is fixed and the other end is free so in simply supported beam we will have the reactions at the point of roller sports so in this way we represent the line diagram or you can say force diagram of a simply supported beam in cantilever beams we will have reaction force at the fixed end and a resistive movement at the fixed end also this is a force diagram for cantilever beam to give the clear idea about shear force and bending moment let me take an example of a block that is under the shear force so in the chapter of normal stresses and shear stresses we have done the problem similar to this block so i can use the analysis of shear force in the block to understand the concept of shear forces in the beams here i i am showing a block on which we are having a shear force that is in this direction so here each section experiences a shear force so it is fixed from the lower end and on the top i am having a force so if you see the layers in this on all the layers i will get the shear forces so if i divide it into the elements each element will experience a shear force and that will be in this way equal and opposite directions so in this way you will get the shear forces on each element so now when we have the shear force f on the top it will the block will get a resistance of force f and each element will experience the shear force f as i move down the length as i move down each section will exp experience the shear force of magnitude f so now if i rotate this element it is a fixed end fixed side and i just increase the length of this and now you can see here the force is acting so if i assume that this is the axis of this body and now i can compare it compare this body with the beam so here the direction of force is transverse and the beam is fixed from one end and it is free from the another end so now you can imagine that there is a force f so now each element or you can say each section will experience a shear force of magnitude f so if i draw any element out of these so it will experience a shear force of magnitude f so this is 
we call shear force in a beam. So now if I talk about bending moment, what is the formula of moment? Moment is force into distance, perpendicular distance. So now if I again draw and consider this block as a beam, if I assume that its length is large, this direction its length is very large. So I am having a force F here. So if I consider this element, so and ask you about the movement on this element. So what you will answer is that movement on this will be m and its magnitude is equal to f into distance x. So now as I move from free end to the fixed end, the value of x increases and m will the function of m is the function of x and the m will vary linearly. So its magnitude is 0 at the free end and its magnitude will vary linearly and it will be maximum on the layer that is just a descent to fixed layer. So here you can see the force is acting on this. So if I talk about this section, so on this the moment will be force into this distance A. If I talk about this section, then moment on this will be force into distance B. On the extreme, it will be, that means on the fixed layer, it will be F into distance C. So that is how the movement is varying with, with the position of the section. So when we talk about the shear force in a beam, it is the unbalanced vertical force on one side of a section, either right or left. And it is sum of all the no normal forces on one side of the section. So we can either consider right side or left side, the magnitude will be equal. So if I consider this section and now I can say that W3 minus R2 will be the magnitude of shear force and it is downward on the right side of the section. Obviously if it is downward on the right side, it will be upward on the left side of the section. So on the left side, it will be equal to W1 plus W2 minus R1. So if I am having upward shear force on the left side of the section and downward shear force on the right side of the section, then this type of shear force will be considered positive. So for calculation purpose, I have to consider either right or left side of a section. Similarly, when we talk about the bending moment at a section of a beam, it is defined as algebraic sum of the moments about the section of all the forces on one side of the section. So if I consider this beam on which R1 and R2 are the reactions and W1, W2, W3 are the loads, on any section 1, I have to calculate the moments acting on one side by considering the forces on one side. So for example, if I considering the forces on the right side, so I have to take the algebraic sum of the moments of all the forces that is on right side. So it will be R2 into x1 minus w2 into x2 minus w3 into x3. So this moment will be equal when we talk about the left side. So it should be equal to m is equal to r1 into the distance that it be x4 
and this will be x5 so r1 into x4 minus w1 into x5 sign convention for bending moment is that it is considered positive if the moment on the left portion is clockwise and on the right portion is counterclockwise so if this is the direction the case will be of sagging of the beam so in this case we will call that the moment is positive and if on the any section if it is counterclockwise on the left and clockwise on the right then it will be negative bending moment so depending upon the type of loads and type of sports we will have different variation of shear forces and bending moment so that variation of shear force and bending moment along the span will be represented in shear force and bending moment diagram so in the next lecture we will discuss about the shear force and bending moment diagram